So here we are in Lightroom and we have uh, our two copies of the same image uh, with different settings applied to them. And I want to, to blend them in, in Photoshop. So uh, having both of those images selected, I'm going to right click on one of them, uh, select edit in and then open as layers in Photoshop. So we are now in Photoshop and I have the two uh, images loaded as layers inside the same file. Um, the technique I'm going to use for this is to use the channels. Especially I'm going to use the blue channel. And, and the reason for this is that this image has warm uh, colors in the rocks and cool colors in the sky and the sea. So the blue channel should give us uh, quite a bit of separation already. Um, I want really to that separation to be better. And in order to do this, I'm going to add to this image an adjustment layer. This is going to be a throwaway adjustment layer. I'm not going to keep it. I'm only creating this layer to uh, create a better layer mask in the end. So what I'm going to do, I'm going with the um, top image, top layer selected, I'm going to add an adjustment layer of hue saturation. And here I want to pump up the saturation. This will make out the difference in colors to be more evident. I also have the, the C here is this cyan color. So uh, if I select the cyan here and I specifically bring up the saturation there, you see that it will look very electric blue. And this is fine. Uh, I'm going to throw away this. It, it looks really ugly, but I remember this is a throwaway layer. I'm only using it to increase the separation between the different color channels. Uh, I'm also going to operate on the blues, hoping to get some more uh, out of the sky. Uh, and maybe a bit of reds to increase the saturation of the rocks. So at this point, I can have a look at my channels. And I'm going to only visualize the blue channel. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of contrast here. And uh, you see bright areas where the sky and the sea are, and dark areas where the rocks are. So this is already pretty good. Uh, I can directly use this channel. And the way I would I use this, I would keep the command control key pressed and click on the channel. This will transform the channel, channel into a selection. And then I go back to my top layer and I create a layer mask by clicking on this icon here at the bottom. And this will create a layer mask based on the selection. Now I can take my throwaway adjustment layer and just delete it. And here we have something that is starting to look good. We have good clarity in the rocks and we have starting to see fewer halos around it. Uh, let's have a look at our layer mask here by clicking the Alt Option key um, on top of the mask. Uh, and what we want to do here is actually to make the border between the selected and non-selected areas much more precise. The best tool I found that it works for this is um, using the dodge and burn tools. Uh, I'm going to show you how. So if I want to make the dark areas darker, I can use the burn tool and make sure that the range here on top is shadows. This will make sure that while I paint over the dark areas to make them darker, I will not darken the highlights. So let's see how this works around here. You see at the border, I'm painting with the, the burn tool. I'm using a, a large brush, large soft brush, and you see it's creating a very dark area here. Everything that is dark is getting darker and everything that is bright stays bright. So now I'm done with the burning. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make the bright areas brighter, possibly completely white. And for this, I'm going to use the opposite of the burn tool, and that is the dodge tool. 
and I'm going to make sure that the range is highlights. This means that as, as I paint, the shadows will stay dark and only the highlights will change. See? So we've got all the sky is white. I'm going to bring in all the water. I don't need to be very precise about this. I can just go quickly. If I had to replace the sky, I would need to be more precise, but this is not the case. So after a bit more dodging, I've uh, created a pretty good layer mask and I can just select my top layer and see that the transition between the rocks and the sky and the sea is very precise. There are no halos left there and the sea is uh, as smooth as I wanted and the sky too. There isn't too much contrast. I can just flip this layer uh, just to let you see the difference. So now before finishing this I will probably go and uh, clone out those pipes that were here on the beach and then uh, save and go back to Lightroom. So we are now back in Lightroom where I've applied some finishing touches to, to make those rocks stand out more, a bit more localized contrast and color control. And I would just say this is the finished image and I'm pretty happy with it. So thanks for watching.